it was way lower, so you could see exactly what we were doing. I don't know, dude. I'm gonna give her. I'm gonna try it. I guess. Seems like a bad idea. Hey guys, my name is Alex Barham, and this is gonna be part two of a series I'm calling Getting Better. Uh, last week, we talked about fear and failure and how you shouldn't let those things hold you back. This week, we're gonna talk about trust, faith, and commitment issues. How to know when to push forward. The basic tenet of this is that anything that we're doing on the river is inherently unnatural. You know, our brains are wired around survival, uh, taking big risks, not really a part of that. For every risk, there is a reward, sure, but is that in a totally lizard brain kind of calculus, what is going to get us on and through life successfully? Obviously, we are blessed to live in a time where we get to take these life and death risks you know, around the edges recreationally. As we said before, we're all somewhere on a curve. We're all looking to get better, to fulfill the dreams and the things that we say at the bar we want to do. But obviously it's a sport of incrementalism and slowly stepping up higher and higher as you challenge yourself further and further. Clearly we all go at our own pace and we are all going to take bigger steps at different rates. That's gonna depend on our personality, what we ate for breakfast that day, how the last run went maybe, all of those things. And choosing your moment to step up and try something, just like we said in the last video, is a huge part of personal progression and kayaking in general. In the same way that it is awesome to see someone step up and try something that is really high on their level, there's no shame in walking up to something and saying, you know what, I know I've run this a hundred times, but I don't like the way it looks today. Really, the whole secret to kayaking is taking the right step at the right moment to successfully push yourself up and over onto that next step in your incremental growth. Speaking technically, choosing that challenge is often very simple. Let's say we've been working on a boof. Well, if you've got your boof at four feet, the obvious thing to go and do is to try it at eight feet. If you can do four linked cartwheel ends, the obvious thing would be to start split wheeling or trying more of those ends, right? What it comes down to is your mental willingness to take that chance. And a lot of that execution is gonna come down to choosing the right challenge to try next. Just because you can do a skill on a fundamental level does not mean that you're going to be willing to jump and take it to the extreme, nor should you. What we're talking about here is incrementalism. To working your way steadily from learning a trick to mastering a trick. What you'll find along the way is that by doing these things incrementally, you will also be much more willing to trust yourself, have faith that you can complete what you've put out in front of you, and go out there and commit to doing it once your skirt's on. So let's break down each one of those things individually. Trust. For me, Trust is a fact-based system. I work off a very simple formula where if I know I can do a thing, then I trust myself that I can do that thing. So the simplest way to do that is to learn that thing somewhere safe, test myself 
somewhere where that thing is more difficult. Do it where there are consequences and then keep doing that until I consider it mastered. For example, we said boofing before, or, you know, let's, let's talk about a blunt. Okay. So you go out there when you first throw that, those first couple pops, it's terrifying, right? You think you're going to land on your head. You're going to flip. You're not really confident in your role, all of those things. But you do that repetitively on bigger and bigger features when you're kind of in less and less control. You're not waiting for the perfect moment. You're just doing it when it feels right. Before you know it, you can throw that trick on the biggest feature that you can possibly ride and you're going to land it. Even if you're not really in control, just because you've mastered that technique by the same token, you'll amaze yourself creaking or river running when you pull a high brace out of nowhere. I mean, think about when you first were learning to roll in a pool and you're like, there's no way this is going to save my butt on a river. Before you know it, you can roll up against a wall, getting your ass handed to you in a, in a hole, all of those things. But the beginning, you didn't have any of those data points to prove to yourself that yes, if it is physically possible, I have mastered this skill and I will get it. All right, I just swam. So like I'll get it 99% of the time. And that actually segues really well into faith. Once you have that skill mastered, you have to have the faith in yourself that you can execute. We all know that we are between swims, that old cliche. We all know that even if we've mastered something, we are not going to hit it every single time. So for me, what it comes down to is looking at things in terms of numbers. I know that the odds of me flipping in boogie water, very, very low. I know the odds of me going and hitting a boof, very, very high. I know the odds of me punching a hole, pretty damn good. Does that mean it's going to happen every single time? Nope. But in the same way that if I walk down the street in a city, there's an outside chance that an AC unit will fall from the sky and kill me. I know that there's a very high percentage that I'm going to be able to execute this move. And if I don't, then I'm going to have to go back and learn and figure out why. That's where it all comes down to having faith in yourself that you can execute. For me, I'm a scientist by trade. I do this by numbers. I like to have a lot of data, a lot of repetition to know that that's something I can do. It helps me build a high level of personal confidence. For some other people, when they got it, they got it. And that would be a blessing. <laughs> but I think for most of us, the secret is going to be repetition. Last step, commitment. A lot of times I refer to this as clocking in. Um, there was a paddler who used to be local here that I have a lot of respect for who wrote try harder uh, right on the front of his cockpit rim. And it's something that always stuck with me. And it, it taught me a mentality that when you're above something where you're nervous and you are going to be pushing limits or taking a higher degree of risk, you have to just clear your head, think about all of the times that you've done what you're about to do correctly and just clock in. It's time to go to work. For a lot of people, these commitment issues are a huge barrier to their personal growth and executing. There are a lot of outside factors that will push you both into the water and towards walking the drop. Sometimes it's how far you drove, who's there that day. Uh, it's kind of cold. I don't like paddling in a dry suit. All of these little things will float around in your head and try to throw you off your game, try to get you to do something that, uh, you know, maybe isn't the best idea 
or more likely talk you out of something that is completely within your range. I feel like that's part of what friends are for, you know, tell you that you've got this and reassure you, make you feel comfortable. But at the end of the day, you should always on the river be a self-contained unit in the same way that I have a pin kit built into my PFD and everything that I need to help myself or help someone else in there. Mentally as well, you have to be fortified. So you have to be able to get to that spot and just clear out the noise. If you break that rapid down into its parts, break that trick down into its fundamentals, just think about what it actually is going to take to get to the other side of your challenge. Everybody's process is going to be a little different. I know people who want to rush through so they don't overthink anything. I know people who take unbelievable amounts of time staring at lips and then just all of a sudden execute flawlessly. That's where all the tutoring in the world ends. All you can do is just like performing tricks, observe yourself, observe your outcomes, and find a system that works for you. If you'd like an example of what I do when I'm clocking in, I like to leave everybody down below. If there's somebody up at the boats, I, I usually let them go or I'll ask them to go down to the drop just to get that physical space alone so I can get a quiet space in my mind. Get in the boat. I usually take as long as I need to to clear my mind before I put it in the water. Once I'm in the water, I usually repeat that process, but it should only take a couple of seconds then splash my face. If I have to talk out loud, talk out loud through what I'm about to do and go execute. The reality is a lot of the times with these commitment issues, once you've pushed in and you're in the flow, you're liberated. You know, you, you're doing whatever you said you were going to do. You don't have a choice anymore. <laughs> and I think that's something that People who don't paddle don't get, and people who do paddle really love if you are drawn to harder whitewater. But that decision should have been made far beforehand, and you should be trying to make that decision based on, again, trusting yourself because of what you've done, having faith that you can do it in this high pressure situation and then just going and doing it. If this sounds overly repetitive or overly simplified, it's because this isn't a ball and field sport. You know, you can't practice to the same degree that you have to execute on game day. You have to, like most extreme sports, practice at a lower level and then go significantly bigger. That is just a, a simple fact of geology. You're not gonna get usually enough opportunities to truly incrementally work your way up. You know, the, the example I think about is back in the big waterfall days where everyone wanted to run these huge drops, but most people just didn't have access. And the guys who were at the really high end were doing more travel then anyone was really putting their head in to get to this variety of waterfalls. I mean, they were passing by so many opportunities to go incrementally up this line. So then when you saw people who had run a couple 20 footers and then were like, all right, I've, I've totally got this 20 footer thing down. I'm gonna go find a 50 footer because there's a 50 footer that's four hours away, but the nearest 30, 40 footer is like six hours away. Yeah, I mean, it could work. If you have that level of faith in yourself, sure, but I wouldn't call it trust at that point because you don't have that full curve of data points. You don't have that full 
arsenal of experience to say, yes, I've got this. I can commit to this with a you know, level of confidence that I would want. That really is more faith-based. I've got this, you know, knowing in your gut that you've got this. Sometimes that is just what it takes. And sometimes those are the moments that are just going to stick with you forever because you had that. And it's not a character flaw, but it's not also maybe the most responsible way to go about doing things. My priority is always that everyone has the longest and most fruitful career in whatever it is, but in this case, paddling. I don't want to see anyone get injured. I don't want to see anybody get a, some sort of mental complex about something. I want to see everyone progress on that curve without setbacks. I hope this was helpful. It'll definitely be more helpful in concert with part one. Thank you for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Please don't contact me on social media. If you have a question, just ask in the comments. Thanks.